Hi, and welcome back to Flute Playing 101, 101 tips on how to play the flute. My name is Octavio Cortez, and today we're going to discuss the other family of flutes, right? If you have seen the previous introduction and videos, uh, you know that we discussed the fixed flute, uh, fixed uh, whistle flutes, right? Several examples and all of that. Today we're going to have a few other examples, but this time it is about the flutes on which the instrumentalists complete the whistle, right? This is the other big family of flutes. So of course, you can create other families, open hole, close hole, transversal from flutes, uh, side blown, front blown, uh, you name it. But uh, we're going to concern ourselves basically in this process. Uh, on defining what a flute uh, is, right? And because of that, we're just going through those two types of flutes. Fixed flute, uh, fixed whistle flute, and today is the, um, the other kind of flute, right? Actually, the most popular one. Uh, you find many examples throughout the world. Um, fl flute being the most ancient instruments, or among the most ancient instruments, uh, even happens naturally, right? In, in reeds that may have been cut by the wind or something like that, and then the wind again whistles on them. Um, that's probably what led the primitive man to realize that there was a, a there was a, the, the possibility of making a sound uh, at will with a reed, and this is one of basic uh, reeds, right? Reed flutes. It's basically a transversal flute. It's closed in this end, right? And it has a hole, right? Like more like a transversal flute, and six holes. Doesn't have a hole in the bottom. It's just these six holes, and it's a, an example of one of those flutes where you have to complete the whistle. This flute, uh, same as the concert flute, works by dividing the air on the edge, right? On that edge over there, the instrumentalist is going to complete the whistle by putting the lip on the edge and then blow into the edge, the other edge of the hole, right? This one over here. And that's how it sounds. And of course, by changing the length, the virtual length of the instrument, right? By closing the holes, all of them, or opening them one at a time, you can uh, create different notes, right? Different uh, virtual lengths of the instrument and then duplicate them by that trick you heard on the second octave, right? Um, that's uh, a transversal flute. This is one is from Colombia. They use it to play uh, cumbias and all of those things today. Um, here's another interesting example. And by the way, some flutes uh, are misrecognized the flutes as flutes throughout the world because they have um, either a small reed that vibrates or a membrane that creates the vibration. Uh, those are not flutes. Flutes only vibrate air. I just wanted to clarify that because throughout many cultures in the world, they, some of the instruments have looked like flutes, right? They have a hole, they play similarly to this. But in reality, the air is being directed into uh, a membrane or a reed that vibrates. Those are more familiar with, uh, say, the clarinet or the oboe, if it's a double reed. Uh, it's, a, it's not really a flute, right? So flutes have um, the whistle. This one, on the other hand, is a Chinese-made flute, right? This one has a membrane, but this membrane here, what it does is it creates a, a particular tone to the instrument. I'm going to play it a little bit so you can hear the, the normal tone of the instrument, and then we're going to play a kind of prevent the vibration of that animal skin, that, that little membrane in there. So it, this one also needs to warm up a little bit because uh, the, membrane, the, the membrane needs that extra moisture right, in order to start working properly. So this, this needs to be warmed up. Quite an instrument, uh, uh, an interesting instrument. And of course, uh, Chinese are masters are decorating their instruments and all of that. But this is an example of a flute that uses a, mem a membrane to create a particular tone of the instrument, right? A kind of an unusual one in that sense. Uh, there are others, and um, for instance, the pan flute, that will be also another instrument that uh, is considered the, to be one that you have to complete the, the, the whistle. 
but this is not a pan flute. This is what's called a sampogna from South America, from the Andean region. And unlike the pan flute, which is meant to be played melodically and with a clean sound like this, sometimes it's just a single row of, of, of lines, right? This one has two different lengths, right? For each one of them. And that's the way it creates a note. And it's also uh, meant to be played aggressively, rather like... It's a different kind of an instrument, uh, the zampogna, but also one in which you have to complete the whistle by using your mouth, right? It's a different kind of, uh, of flute than the ones we showed before. Now, I'm going to show the, the same instrument three times, and the reason I'm going to do that is, uh, is very interesting. Um, as you can see, these three instruments, uh, well, they're not exactly in the same pitch, but they're very close to one another. They're meant to be the same instrument, uh, kena, from also from the Andean region. And this is also one that you have to complete the whistle, right? You have to, let me see, there you go. You have to put it and then blow kind of uh, frontwards to divide the air into in there. But the reason I'm going to show the three of them is to uh, show a couple of things. Uh, first, how material can affect the sound of an instrument. This one's made out of wood, all right? This one is made out of wood, right? And these two are made out of a, a reed, right? A very strong reed that uh, grows in the, in the very high mountains in the Andes. But these two, uh, despite being made of the same, uh, the same material, they have very different diameters, although they're pitched in the same or close to frequency, right? So the reason I want to show that is to, to, for you to see that even though they are different, they're very close to one another when it's, uh, when it's the same material. When it's a different material, however, it sounds different. So this is the one um, from the same material, the same reed, but it is the thin one. Right? I'm going to try and play the other one, which has very large holes. Sounds different, although it's the same material, right? The construction of the instrument makes it sound different. This is the wood one. That's a different, different ring to it, right? Different tone. So those are examples of flutes that use uh, the instrumentalist's mouth to complete the whistle. This, of course, is the one that we are going to be talking about most of the time. And these two first videos were essentially an introduction, right, to, uh, to start talking about this, which is the modern concert flute. Also side blown, blown, right, like the transversal flutes I showed. And also one where the instrumentalist needs to complete the, the, the whistle, right? And same as the other ones, uh, the more holes you close, right, or the more you open, the more the frequency changes. In this one we have tricks to go to the third octave, right? And, and that makes it a lot easier and it's of course the most developed of them all. Ironically, among the woodwind, woodwind family, the flute, the concert flute, is the one that has the least amount of keys. So, in a way, it's the most developed, right? It needs less keys and it still uh, completes uh, or does the job. So that's it for today. Uh, that was the talk about uh, essentially the flutes that need uh, the instrumentalist to complete uh, the, the whistle, right? This is uh, just a brief introduction to the large family of flutes that exists in the world. Uh, but all of them fall into these two categories, essentially, right? And the other ones that have membranes or reeds are dot flute, flutes, okay? Thank you for watching. Again, my name is Octavio. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll be back soon.